Dooley is a master certified coach who trains, supports, and grows coaches in as many ways as he possibly can. His biweekly coaching skills forum, telecalls, the Be Do Bits, get it? Be Do, Ben Dooley, Be Do, awesome. Bits newsletter and his masterful is as masterful does workbook series. His powerful and unparalleled Masterful You Advanced Coach Training Program targets the science, artistry, and performance of our coaching and has catapulted many coaches to the next level and beyond, as you will experience a taste of that today. Ben has also served as past president of ICF Chicago Chapter, co-founder of the ICF Midwest Regional Advisory Council, and past co-producer of the Midwestern Coaching Conference. In fact, just about everything he does in the coaching world demonstrates his overwhelming commitment to helping coaches discover their powerful coaching magnificence, confidence, and success. It's simple. The world needs us to show up and be more masterful coaches, that we are here to be and do the masterful coaching that the world needs us to do. And your journey towards your masterful coaching continues to deepen right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ben Dooley. Oh, I get a little clap in the corner. Yay. Hello. And I love it. Everybody's muted. And so there's all this. Well, that's good. It's like like, silent, silent applause. However, so first off, I know that you've all been, uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on that your chapter has been providing all these things. We've all had full days. And we're all trained to be really nice and polite and proper on Zoom by muting ourselves and being responsible of our space. So unmute, (laughs) because this is where we get to actually engage with each other. Let's participate, Let's, let's be with each other. Obviously, if you're in a place where there's noise and distractions, be responsible to that and mute. But other than that, really have the full permission. Let's unmute the lines and keep them open so that we can engage. And part of that is I'm gonna be reaching out to you and and checking in and seeing what your thoughts are, what you're getting from this, what you're learning and to actually help us build this model together. So yes, see, she knows. So so this is, uh, I'm so appreciative that those of you who showed up here today, thank you for being here. I know you've got other things going on, um, but my, uh, my hope and commitment is that you are going to discover some exciting things. This may sound in some parts familiar. You may be like, oh yeah, I kind of know that, but I can tell you there will be contexts and things and dots connected that, that are new or that have reawakened things. So pay attention to all those new things that are popping up. Um, And also to to sort of clarify what this is that we're gonna work on today. This uh, This is actually, I teach, as was mentioned, I teach an advanced coach training program. And there's really, uh, there's a lot of great trainings out there. Uh, My attempt is to really create something that targets growing the coach growing you, not just giving you some skill sets and and kind of uh, tweaking and adjusting, but really growing the coach that you are here to be. And this, it's a 30 week long course. It's, it's quite a commitment, but it is also a powerful journey. This appears in lesson three. So this alone, is the very, I bring this up because this is so foundational. This is lesson three out of 30 in the course that I train. And everything that we do builds on top of this. So what you're getting today is such deep core prime foundational work that really as we, as we, as we in the class dig into it more, it really goes underneath the training that you got. It goes underneath the core competencies to support them even stronger and more uh, solidly. So that's what I am so excited and happy to be able to share with you today. This is the amazing eight bar formula. Oh, I get a heart, yay. Um, So take whatever notes you want. Um, I intentionally do not have 
handouts and PowerPoints and screens and all that stuff, because this is really here for you. This is here for you. We're here to engage. And this is really going to be simple. You can build your own. I will mention later on at the end, oh, I happen to have a professional, clean, smooth, awesome, fancy looking uh, handout that I'm happy to pass along and then just send me it on an email and I'll send it back to you and all of that. But if I send it beforehand, there's an easy tendency to, for us to go, yeah, I, I got it, I got it, okay, great, I got this. And I want you to get the depth of this. So that's why we're gonna really take this apart step by step. We're gonna build this. It's called the amazing eight bar formula because there are six steps. Pause for the raucous laughter that never occurs. It's unbelievable. All right, it's called the eight bar formula because the, the uh, first letter of each of those stages spells out the word eight bar, A-T-E. B-A-R, as in, I ate a bar of chocolate or whatever else you like to eat that comes in bar form. We're gonna learn this, uh, this design, but we're gonna learn it backwards, okay? Because we're gonna start at the R because the R is where our clients are. And this is the single thing that every single one of our clients comes to us for. So think about it for a minute. Now, I'm gonna ask you, shout it out loud and proud. It begins with an R and it is the one thing that every single one of your clients has come to you for. What is it? Reason. Results. 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 That is everything. Different kinds of results, right? I want a change in my this. I want to get more of that. I want less of this. I want to discover this. I want to create that. I want, it, I want more, less. I want different. I, I don't want these results. I want these results instead. That's it. Every single, am, am I right here? Every single one of your clients, every single thing they brought up is, I want a kind of result. And your clients are smart. You're smart. We all know there's only one way to get any kind of result. Action. Get, action. I didn't even walk you through it. She's already action. I know this. I'm on it. Actions. So if we back up the formula, that A next to the R, actions creates results. Really simple so far, right? This is physics. This is cause and effect. This is uh, action and impact. The, or, you know, uh, this, is, this is everything. We have to do something in order to have some kind of change or, or result or outcome. If we don't do something, nothing happens. For example, I know and I think a lot about how to get six pack abs and a beach body. <laughs> I don't currently have a beach body and six pack abs. Why? Because I'm not taking the action. Simple. If I took the action, then I would start getting different results. Now, the problem this is what our clients are coming for. Coach, I don't want these results. I keep doing these old actions. I keep getting these old results. I need new results, but I don't know the new actions. And this is where our clients come to us and they say, Coach, what do I do? How do I do this? What, how do I, what? And they want advice. They want knowledge. They want information of what is the right actions to get the right results. Typically, this is the world of consulting. This is certainly where expertise comes in. Consulting, um, mentoring, advising, teaching and training, they all kind of share this world of do this, do that, don't do this, and then you'll do these actions, you'll get these new results. That's why we hire a personal trainer. That's why we hire an expert to 
guide us through and shortcut our actions because otherwise we keep trying new things and they maybe work. They'd, it's like a giant roulette wheel, right? We go, ding, 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 ding. Hey, how about trying this action? And I try it. No, oh, it doesn't work. Okay, spin the wheel. Ding, 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 ding. Try this action instead. Uh, I tried that. It doesn't work. And we often do that. We fall into that trap when we go into problem solving and fixing, when we fall into that trap in coaching, we start offering our knowledge, our experience, our expertise, and, and they don't quite fit or apply to the client. And part of what happens is the client starts getting trained by their ineffectiveness of new actions, that new actions don't create new results. Because I've tried all these new actions. I keep trying new things. I keep trying and trying and trying, and it doesn't work out. And so now there starts to be built this, this sort of unconscious undercurrent belief that, that new actions don't work. When we know they do, we just don't know what the right one is. There's a couple of other problems that show up when we just launch in at this A, start giving actions. Um, for example, I happen to know the magic, simple, easy process on how to get a million dollars legally. Anybody interested? I'm happy to share it with you. Anybody interested? Million dollars? We do. No? Yes. Nina's Nina's interested. Nobody else? Okay, Iris. Yes. Good. I was gonna say otherwise, just turn off the volume and don't listen. All right. So Tony, good, raising your hand. So this is a simple, and I'm, by the way, I'm telling you, simple two-step process. Do these two things and you will get a million, guaranteed, by the way, guaranteed. Like if you don't do these things, forget it. If you do these things, I promise you, you will get a million dollars, guaranteed. Two things, the easiest million dollars you ever made in your life. Okay, here it comes. Don't get pens up. Get ready to write this down. Okay. Step number one, spend less money. Step number two, earn more money. Million dollars right there. <laughs> Am I right? Of course I'm right. <laughs> Has anybody ever taken a, a wealth building or a money management uh, money mindset, money, any type of seminar or read any books or programs about building wealth. Anybody? Yeah. That's the core of it, isn't it? Every, any wealth gets built because you spent less and you made more. That's it. Whether it's real estate, stocks, investing, building business, creating business, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. Those are all methods and strategies. But you cannot have a million dollars unless you spend less and you earn more. Guarantee. However, it's not that easy because of your specific circumstances. Well, but this, and I have that, and I got to take care of these, and here's my only, here's my income, and this is my expenses, blah, blah, blah. All of these other factors that get in the way and make this very simple formula and this very simple solution very complex and not so easily executable. Because it works for somebody, but it may or may not work for you based on your circumstances. Same is true for all the wonderful experiences and, and, and knowledge that we've acquired. We can offer our knowledge and wisdom to our clients. We can offer that information. We can shortcut and go straight to the actions, but those actions may or may not stick and may or may not work based on the client's unique environment, experience, situation, circumstances. So there's problems that occur when we just jump in at the A. Um, by the way, this is where New Year's resolutions hang out. 
every single New Year's resolution. I'm going to go to the gym 14 times a day. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to do that. It's all actions, isn't it? Actions designed to get to a certain result. But they often don't last. What is it? It's something like they don't last past week three or something like that is the typical study. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So when we start at actions, it's hard to keep it sustainable. It's hard to find the right actions that work. And when we do find the right actions that work, it's hard to make sure that they do apply to that, spe uh, to that specific client and circumstances. And there's more. Because how many times have you actually gotten the right action with your clients? They did it. They did the auction. They did the homework. They did the assignment. They got the results they were coming for. It worked. It happened. Great success. And then the following week, well, I mean, they, they kind of did it. They did it for, for the most part. And then they sort of got the, the results. And then, and then the following week, they were, they were going, they did it kind of a little bit, but they really kind of did stuff happen. Work and the kids and all. And then the next week, well, I mean, I thought about doing it, but then this happened and I did. And next thing you know, they, they had the right action. They had the action that gets them the results. They got the success. And still, they slid back into the old actions, into the old results, even after they actually got it. How many times does that happen? Yeah. So that tells us that there's just jumping in at the A, giving actions, fixing the problems, all of that. It can be helpful when it is. We do it as the best of intentions, but it really is not powerful coaching because of all these things that tend to happen. Occasionally they work, but rarely do they work as well as we think they do. Because there's something, look at, we still have a bunch of letters to get to. And there's that B that's right there that's getting in the way. It's that B that's blocking and guiding and managing that those actions, that A. So let's look at this. What is the B that is controlling all of our actions? Belief. Belief. Absolutely. It's our beliefs that control and operate the actions that we take. We cannot act out of alignment and accordance of our beliefs. So if mm -hmm. I believe something to be true, I'm going to act that way. This is also, this is starts to reveal, well, but I say I'm powerful and amazing, but I'm still not taking actions because there's another belief in charge. So there's beliefs that are overriding. When we get these new actions, that point us to the new results and we don't stick with them or we don't do them. I, I know what to do, just don't do it. It's because there's a belief that's getting in the way, a belief that's, that's derailing and, and, and curtailing and blocking and distracting from the actions. So this is good because this also lets us know Trying to come up with the right action is exhausting. It's that roulette wheel. And even when we find it, it doesn't stick. And it's all this stuff. So instead of trying to come up with the right actions, which may or may not work, all we need to do as coaches is work on the client's beliefs. Because, right, if we change the belief, that supports the new actions to work much more easily. Making sense, right? Yes? Okay, good. All we have to do is now change the beliefs. There's one little problem here. Is 
it's not so easy to change beliefs. So let's look at this. I'm not gonna reveal anything. I wanna give you full permission to just notice your own inner thoughts, okay? But let's, I'm gonna bring up some hot button topics and issues that are very current. And notice the beliefs that you have that come up. Notice the beliefs that you have about, uh, about uh, uh, COVID. It's a hoax. They're, it's, they're making a big deal out of nothing. This is serious. It's a worldwide pandemic. Out of that, look at the beliefs you have about masks. It's an infringement on my rights. It is necessary. We have to do this. Vaccination, same thing. Notice the beliefs that you hold about politics. Trump, love Trump, hate Trump. Biden, love Biden, hate Biden. Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, independent. Notice the beliefs that you have about gay rights. Abortion, which is huge topic right now. Abortion rights. Uh, gay rights, lesbian, immigration, international relations. What's happening with Ukraine? Hey, it's their thing. They should deal with it. We need to be in help here. Whatever beliefs we have, we all have strong beliefs about everything. Even religion is all beliefs. That's all that it is. This God, that God, his God, her God, your God, my God, many gods, one God, no God. It's all beliefs. Now, notice the beliefs that have come up as I bring up these topics. And notice what happens when somebody comes up to you and says, what you believe is wrong. You need to believe this way instead. What happens? Anyone? Defensiveness, retaliation. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Defensiveness, retaliation. What else? What pops I, up? I think the belief becomes stronger as a way to defend it. Or yeah. as, as a way to defend oneself. Y you bet. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of believe that, like sort of, but now I really believe it. <laughs> and in fact, I'm right. Your belief is wrong, you stupid idiot moron. You need to believe this way instead. And this is how wars are started for centuries. Intolerance. In definitely. And you need to believe me instead. And it's the same on both sides, on all sides. All that we're talking about is a conflict of beliefs and our beliefs are sacred. We hold firmly to the beliefs that we hold, that we have, because our beliefs define who we are. You take away my beliefs, you take away me and my identity. And I don't know how to show up in this world because my beliefs guide my actions and create my results. And so if you take away my beliefs, I don't know how to act and I don't know how to have then a life. That's the fear that shows up. And so we clamp down, we lock harder onto our beliefs, and we fight to the death to protect and defend our beliefs. Even the ones that are causing us pain, even the ones that are creating conflict in our relationships and our families and our lives, we will, I'd rather be right because being right means I live hold on to our beliefs. We protect and defend our beliefs, even the ones that cause us pain. Now, let's look at the beliefs that are deeper, subtler, more personal. The ones that your clients come to you with, and they sometimes work overtime to try to convince you to agree with. No, coach, you don't understand. I'm not good enough. I have a lifetime of proof to back it up. I don't deserve, I don't know how. 
I can't, I shouldn't, I don't. I have strong beliefs about me and what's possible and what I get and what I have. And they're strong. So we can't just come in, even though we have the best intentions to uplift our clients and hold them powerfully and client just believe this instead. And yet it doesn't change so easily because our beliefs are sacred. With me so far? Yes. Yeah. We try. Yeah. yeah. Question coming. Yeah. I, I can't help but to, to associate beliefs with like spirituality. I'm not trying to make this spiritual, but it's, it's, it's it so deep rooted. Spirituality is beliefs. <clears throat> I believe, I, I, I believe in uh, chakras. I believe in the power <clears throat> of the universe. I believe in we're all one. I believe we're all individual. I believe in karma. I believe in, nothing there's no consequence of our actions i believe in the wrath of god i believe in the love of god whatever it is it's just it's all beliefs and then i connect it to identity so it's you're you know depending how we come off to each other which you know you went through a a really a pretty robust list there um you are threatening our our identity when we come off so abrasive with each other you bet. Yeah. And yeah. so we have to deal with these matters as coaches delicately. So delicately. Yeah. One of the things, this is a side thing, and I love your question because when we get this kind of hint, everybody, if we get this kind of participation, you get bonus things. <laughs> uh, um, one of the things that I bring up in my class is um, there's a sacred rule that master coaches hold. And it's really simply client, client can never do client wrong. Even their beliefs aren't wrong, which is a really hard thing when you've got somebody who you're talking with, who is spouting things out of their mouth that is completely antithesis and even harmful to what you believe. Well, A, they may not be the right client for you. If we say, if we challenge their beliefs and we attack them on their beliefs, all they do is clamp down harder, right? And there's no place to go and grow. It's not about agreeing and saying, golly, you're right. Why this is, I'm going to change. But it's finding their truth and their right to believe what they believe. And if we go and meet them there, we may have a chance of doing some more work. And that's what's in the rest of this formula. But I love that you bring that up. Absolutely. Our beliefs are our identity. It's our our reason for living, our being, our existence. And that's why we fight so hard. Okay. So we know as coaches, by the way, when we stick with the old beliefs, we now know from this formula you're going to stick with the old actions. You're going to stick getting the old results. So if you want new results, you cannot get new results unless you get a new belief. Tons of, of other ways that's mentioned, you know, the, um, what is it? Einstein, the solution to the problem lies in a different plane. Um, if you keep, what is it? If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. That's the exact same thing we're talking about. If you keep doing the same old actions, you're going to keep getting the same old results. And if you keep holding on to those same old beliefs, you're going to keep getting the same actions. The only way to get new actions that are going to stick and stay is a new belief has to support it. Okay. And therein lies the conflict. This would be easy. If this was easy, we would be out of a job. So now let's look at how do you create new beliefs? How do we do beliefs work? And this is where we look backwards in the formula. The beliefs are created by the partnership, the combining and blending of T and E. Anybody want to take a crack? This is a tricky one. 
sometimes. Anybody want to take a crack at it? The T plus the E creates beliefs. What is that? Hmm. All right, I'll help you. Beliefs are created by thoughts plus emotions. We have tons of thoughts, tons of thoughts, but it's when that thought gets connected with an emotion, we've now created a truth, a perspective, a meaning out of it. This is good. This is bad. I like this. I don't like that. This is right. This is wrong. I have a thought and then I have a pleasurable feeling and experience and emotion that goes and associates with it. A belief is formed. I have a thought and a negative experience or emotion, something that triggers my fear, gets associated with it. Now I've created a new truth. Truths are beliefs. So in this work that we do, instead of trying to wrangle and force and create a new belief, but they're going to fight back and wait. So that's a never winning battle. So instead, we get to work with our clients to create new thoughts, new emotions that start to form and create new beliefs. And that is what supports the new actions and gets new results. And that's what we do as coaches. Yes, look at all the tools and the exercises that you have learned in your training and along the way and all the, the workshops and all the other things you've learned in these workshops that you've been taking here. All that they're designed is to help create and discover new thoughts, new emotions, new beliefs that support new actions so you can get those new results. Yes? That's it. That's what we do. That's coaching. Almost. Because we still have that one letter left, that A at the very beginning. And this A is actually the coach's playground. This A is where everything begins. This A must be here. Otherwise, change cannot occur. Jimmy's smiling. He's so, you know it, Jimmy. You know, I know you know it. This A is at the beginning of all change. Nothing happens without it. What is it? Acceptance. Uh, not quite acceptance. What is it? Awareness. Awareness. By the way, acceptance comes from awareness. We have to have awareness first. <clears throat> If we're just operating unconsciously, viscerally, automatically, reaction, defensively, whatever it is, then that's, that's the only way we get to go. Oh, thank you, Jimmy, for putting that out. Great. That's the only way. If there's no awareness, this is just how it goes. Once we have awareness, that, in that moment, the moment we have, have awareness, we now hold the power of choice. Ooh, I just realized I keep doing this. <gasps> well, now I can still keep doing it or I can choose not to. Even if we don't know yet what to replace it, we still have the choice of this or not this. Even better, this or this or other things, but it's only possible once we have awareness. Without awareness, nothing happens. With awareness, with awareness comes choice. And with choice, that is where we hold the power of change. Change now becomes instantly possible. So, as now we know through this formula, we're having, we're, as coaches, we are in awareness. Awareness of, this is all we do in our coaching, is awareness of thoughts, Awareness of emotions, awareness of beliefs, awareness of actions, and awareness of the results. Look at all the questions and 
things that we have, the awareness of results, right? Ooh, so what did happen? Well, what was it like? How did that feel? Blah, blah, blah. What was it like? What happened? And all we're doing is we're just getting awareness. Now, here's where we start getting into some nuts and bolts here. Because as coaches, we must have one foot solidly planted, unwavering, unmoving in awareness. With the other foot, we can dance around with our clients on all these other spaces. As long as we've got one foot in awareness, we're in good shape. I can promise you. Anybody here ever have a coaching session where things got stuck or it just got hard or what am I going to do now? And you got lost and confused and not sure where to go and what to do. Or you keep client keeps coming back to the same stuff or the client didn't do the homework again for the seventh time or all anybody, anybody. And how many times have you had that in your head? Like, oh, this client, literally, I have literally, I've been working so hard with a client. I find myself wandering up to a wall and quietly pounding my head on the wall because this client isn't listening. Oh, anyone? Just me? Maybe not the head banging stuff. I'll tell you, it feels good when you stop. I kind of rush. I can promise you. Remember I said, client can never do client wrong. So it's really easy to then throw the blame onto the client. Well, the client isn't ready. The client isn't coachable. The client is this. The client is stuck in their own crap. The client is being the client. The client is doing the best that they can, period. If they could do better, they wouldn't be talking to you, but they can. And so they, they're not able to. And the stuff that's driving you insane about them is highly likely the thing, or at least contributing to the problems that they're struggling with the very thing that's driving you crazy. And since we now know it ain't the client that's doing it wrong, we have stepped out of awareness and we just stepped fully into one of these categories and got hooked. Oh, you did the homework, but you didn't get the out. Well, look, if you're committed to your results, you're gonna do it. It, it, are you really committed to your results or maybe you're just making this up? What results are, do you really want? And now we're hooked on results. Or you did it and, and it didn't work out this way. Something else happened. Well, then clearly you did it wrong. You must have done it differently because I've given this homework to a hundred other people and they've done it brilliantly. So you must have done it wrong. Now I'm attached to actions. I'm not in awareness at all. No, no, client, no, no, no. You're seeing yourself as a victim, okay? You're just seeing yourself as a victim. And here, I want you to really see that you're powerful. I want you to really know that you are a powerful being. Wonderful intentions, not coaching. That's right. Might be, and we might be doing helpful things, maybe, but we're not coaching. Coach or client, client, no, no, no. Don't feel this way. Don't feel angry. Don't feel sad. No, you should be happy about this. Wonderful intentions, not coaching. Client, what I want you to do is I want you to do a gratitude journal. I want you to write down all the things that you're grateful for and that you're happy about. And I want you to think positive thoughts. Wonderful, great, not coaching. Because we're hooked on the individual space. We're hooked on thoughts, emotions, beliefs, actions, results. We're not in awareness. If we're in awareness, client can never do client wrong. 
what is it like over there? It doesn't mean that they get to continue holding that right, but they get to be right about it. So how do you feel? What did happen? Well, what, ha what was the outcome? Oh, you did a different extra action or exercise? Oh, you didn't do the exercise. Great, then what happened then? Well, what are you making up about it? All the, these are all questions and things that we know in our coach training and our coaching experience. And all we're doing, all we have now is we just have some categorizing of recognizing this is what we're doing. When we ask these questions, we're asking for clarity and awareness of thoughts, emotions, mm -hmm. beliefs, actions, results. <clears throat> I can promise you, every single time your coaching is hard, stuck, not moving, going nowhere, difficult, what do I do? How do I help this client? How am I gonna get this client to? We're out of awareness, guaranteed. You just stepped out. All you need to do is just step back into awareness. Now, easier said than done, because if we're not in awareness, there's, that's the only thing. That's how it is. And we're habitual, automatic. But here's the magic. The absolute moment you recognize, oh my goodness, I'm not in awareness. You just had awareness about how you're not in awareness. And therefore, you now have awareness. Whoop, you just bounce there instantly. It's just that easy. We just have to practice the skill and the art of it. So that as we continue to recognize how we get hooked, how we get triggered, how we as coaches get caught up in our own performance of coaching and how we are engaging with our clients, as long as we keep holding firmly to awareness, 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 then we have everything else available in front of us to grow powerfully with our clients. I'm gonna pause for a moment here. Questions, comments. So Ben, I do have a question. So are you defining awareness predominantly on how the coach is um, showing up? Awareness of thoughts. What are they thinking? What do they mean? What are they thinking about? What are the memories are popping up? What's the vision? What's the dream? What are the awareness of emotions? What makes you happy? What's what's that feeling that's there? Oh, for the coach. What's, so. what's this all about? Oh, I'll get there. Okay. Awareness of beliefs. What are you making up about this? What do you predict? What do you know to be true? Awareness of actions. So what are you doing? Awareness of results. What do you got? And as I think a brilliant coach once pointed out, awareness of the coach. What are your, by the way, extra bonus, awareness of your thoughts, of your emotions, of your beliefs, of your actions and your results. If you are in that automatic mode, you ain't got no awareness. The moment you go, oh my goodness, I just realized I'm getting frustrated with this client. Awareness! Oh my goodness, I just realized that I've asked this client 14 times the same question and it's and I'm not hearing their awareness. I just realized I'm trying to figure out how to fix this client. Awareness. I just realized this client is driving me insane. Awareness. So, absolutely this is, by the way, why this is lesson three in my class is because we go deeper into our experience as coaches. And right now, you've already got that. We're getting, as long as we've got awareness of the clients, thoughts, emotions, beliefs, actions, results, and as long as we've got awareness of our thoughts, emotions, beliefs, actions, and results. Because by the way, 
We have our own eight bar that we're going through constantly. The results are we want a happy client that is going to pay us money and keep coming back. The actions are we got to do great coaching. The beliefs are I'm a great coach. I'm not a great coach. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not really an expert here. This is perfectly up my alley. The emotions are I'm excited by this. Ooh, I'm a little scared and uncomfortable by this. The thoughts are, ooh, the last time I had this conversation, oh, I wonder what this is about. All the thoughts that we're having, as long as we've got an awareness of that, we have choice. You have choice now. You can keep playing that same old program or change the game, which is what we've been trained. It's just that you cannot do any of that brilliant coaching stuff that you learned and all those brilliant, amazing tools and all those incredible, amazing insights. It is impossible to employ them unless you have awareness. And once you have awareness, you now have choice. Now you can bring in new thoughts, new emotions, new beliefs, new actions. And that will get you, you, the coach, new results. And same is true with your clients. And all it takes is just the recognizing that you're not in awareness to have awareness. So at the very least, and by the way, I'm not done yet. There's more. But at the very least, have this in front of you. 8-bar, A-T-E-B-A-R, or just write down awareness. Put it up where you coach. Not that you need this big reminder. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, awareness? Hmm. No, it's just a little reminder because we get hooked by our humanness. I can promise each and every one of you are human beings. Safe assumption. And with that comes human defaults. So much about that in the class. And those defaults include, as we've been talking about, problem solving, fixing problems, getting rid of things that are uncomfortable. And so if we're not deeply connected to our powerful coach within, that human comes in and wants to manage this. Awareness. Questions, comments, anything else before we move on? Yeah, I think that um, awareness is very valuable, even when coaching ourselves through situations. Mm -hmm. How do we uh, be observers to our own sort of thoughts, feelings, reactions, and beliefs, and so on? I think that's that's very powerful to coach ourselves too. Yeah, and thank you. And now this also gives us a little clearer language because if we're just being like generically aware. What are you aware of? I'm aware of a lot of things. I'm aware that there's a pile of mess over here. I'm aware that the temperature is this. Let's get clear. What, are, what thoughts are you aware of? What, are you, what emotions are you aware of? What beliefs are popping up about this? What actions? What results? So this gives us a clear language of which to address ourselves as well as to address our clients. Any, any any topic, issue, situation, event, moment in our coaching is in one of these categories. By the way, I promise you, don't do this when you're coaching. If you can record your coaching or if you can witness it or even just kind of replay it in your head afterwards, you will be exhausted if you try to track and follow your client on the eight bar formula. You can just simply say, okay, client, so uh, what happened with your homework assignment, actions? Well, um, so I started off doing the action and then it wasn't really working out too well for me results. And so then I kind of started to lose steam and I stopped doing the action because I started to think, well, what's the point belief? I mean, I was starting to feel a little silly and embarrassed emotions. And then I remembered thoughts that you had said something about that this action thing that I was not doing and that it might get this other result here. And so then I got excited about the result and I started then doing the action, which reminded me I had done this action before and got the results, which got me more excited. And I started doing the action again, and I started feeling more excited. And then I remembered that is a regular coaching conversation. And your client is bouncing all over the place. 
which is why we need to keep that one foot solidly in awareness. You can go anywhere with your client. This is also to be clear, this is not necessarily a linear process. Okay, first we're going to get your thoughts, then we're going to get your emotions, then we're going, it's not that, but that these all have to be turned and flipped in order for change to really occur and stay. And if something is not working, if something is not clicking, if something is not holding, Somewhere along the lines, in one of these, there is where, where the problem lies and the sticking. I keep trying to do it, keep trying to do the thing that's going to get the new results, but I keep not doing it. Oh, there's a belief that gets in the way. You know what? I know I can do this, but every time I do it, I start feeling. There's your feeling. So your clients, their language will tell you instantly where they are feeling stuck. And if you don't know, if they're not telling you, you can easily go and check in any one of these areas to find where the stuck is. And then awareness. Okay. Any other questions, comments before we move on to the next part? All right. That's a, that's a thought that came that um, I, I'm just starting to realize that as you're breaking it down more and more that this eight bar is really trying to address the whole person. Whole person. Yeah. Oh, side thing, by the way, uh, Misha, you are adding so much value to these other coaches here. They, they need to like give you a gift box or something like that. <laughs> so how many times have you heard no, no, no. In coaching, we don't coach the problem. We coach the person. What the hell does that mean? How do you do that? Eight bar formula. Thoughts, emotions, beliefs are the person. Actions are the person which then starts to shift into the outside world. And results are the problem. So now this gives us a place to, how do you coach the person? Here's how. Iris, meaningful things in life show up in a linear process. Ah, yeah, yeah. They do. Well, it does show up in a linear process. No, I'm well, saying, saying very, very few things. Very few. Very few, yeah. Meaningful things. And yet, it... Oops. I mean, it, it's like, it, these all have to be there, but it doesn't have to happen in that order. Absolutely. Yeah. And true, everything, pretty much everything in nature is not really as linear as we like to think it is. Okay. So now we're going to put a pause on this, slide it to the side, and we're going to look at a different area. This is the four, this is an excerpt, just so you know, in the class, this is lesson six, I think. Um, this is an excerpt from lesson six. This is the four realms of how we express ourselves and how we experience the world. And that is basically how life occurs, right? We're either putting it out or we're taking it in. Five senses or putting it out in some manner. There's kind of no other direction for it to go. It's either in or out. Or it stays here and just swirls around, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> so now let's look at these four realms of our experience. The first, in no particular order, just happens to be, the first is intellectual, right? Cerebral. Thinking, visioning, imagining, remembering. All those you know, meaning things and all those, those associations that we have intellectually. We think, we think, 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 think. We're all great thinkers. We've been doing it our entire lives. We think. And realm number two is emotions, heart, feelings, right? We feel things. We have happiness, joy, love, fear, anger, sadness. These are the really the common two worlds that we typically work a lot with in our coaching. 
And we typically have clients that are very familiar with these two worlds, right? In fact, most of the time, we have clients who also go to the third and fourth realms. I'll get there in a second. But most of the time, we have clients who are really well-versed and well-experienced in the world of thoughts and in intellect and mind and cerebral and the world of emotions and thoughts and feelings and heart. Anybody here have clients that are great thinkers? They think, 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 think. Yeah. Anybody here have clients that are great emoters? They're so in touch with their emotions. They cry at the drop of the hat. They laugh at everything. They're so expressive and they so feel. This is how we engage with the world, typically. This is often, all of us typically have one area that we're most comfortable in. This is how we associate and engage in the world. This is how we express ourselves. I got I to gotta tell you what I'm thinking. I got I to gotta share with you my thoughts, my ideas, my thing. I need to think and figure it out. I have to rationally solve the problem. This is also how we receive information. We receive and pick up thoughts and intellectual and, and people when people express all of that. And it goes straight to our thinking. This is also how we solve problems. We solve problems in our realms. We, we think our way out of this. I, I can't take action until I think of the right thing to do. Anybody have that? Or I can't do anything until it feels right, right? It's because they're telling you, this is the realm that I feel powerful in. This is how I fix and solve problems. Not always effective, but that's how I've been trained by life to fix problems. I got to think my way out. I have to feel my way out. It's also typically how we thrive and succeed. We have so many clients who are businesses are thriving. They get paid good money. They, they grow and expand because they think really well. Or we have clients who are really successful and they grow and thrive in their lives because they know how to express and connect and reveal and be in touch with their emotions. These are our areas where we survive and how we thrive. Not always effectively, but it's our comfort place. Now, what happens when you have a thinking client and you ask them a feeling question? Any ideas? Um, it doesn't go well. It, it doesn't. It short circuits. They don't understand that language. It's like you just drop them into a foreign country and it's like, well, I don't understand what that means. So this is partly, again, to help create distinctions about where your client is. The other two realms are, the, the third one, physical, body. For those of us that have kinesthetic training or, uh, or, or somatics, body wisdom, body expression. Ooh, I noticed that you keep, you keep doing this pointing thing with your hand. Ooh, what's happening in your shoulders? Wow, what's going on in your body? What are you feeling? This is also that kinesthetic, like I, I have to touch, I have to do, I have to get in, I have to engage my body, not just engage my mind and my heart. I gotta, my body needs to be a part of this. That's also how some people survive physically. Some people thrive physically. And the fourth area is that spirit, that energy, that essence, that, that mode that we're in. It's that um, there's a, and, and I don't want to go into a lot of it because there's actually like three separate lessons in the class that go deeper into this world. But the short answer is, and we've learned this in our coaching uh, dialogue, like, oh, you're a victim. Like it's beyond thoughts and emotions. It's just a mode. It's an energy level that they're in. It's, it's also when we talk and we speak to their empowered selves, right? Or I'm feeling like everything's hard and it's a battle. I have to, I have to fight. No, 
I'm in this world in this open flow of energy in this place of love and growing. It's beyond thoughts and emotions and body. It's an energy. It's a spirit. It's an essence. Is this making sense? Yeah. So those are the four realms. And as I said, we can run into it so, so easily. Like we as coaches, we've been trained to learn most of these and to work with most of these, some little less than others or more than others. But in general, they all must be addressed for a full life experience. And I promise you, every single thing that is occurring in your life that you are either experiencing is in these four realms or you're expressing is in these four realms, one of them or many. And so when we have clients that are comfortable, for example, high thinkers, we can't just throw them into emotion or body or spirit questions. And so what we get to do is we get to meet them where they are, speak their language, right? Ask them those thinking questions, take them into that deep her thinking and discovery of what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Thinking, 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 all these different variety of thinking questions. And then you get to invite them to let's go touring and visiting this other area. Hey, client, so I just want to check in. It sounds like there's an emotion here. You can even, if it's really foreign to them, you can give them some language, help them learn. Seems like there's a, are you happy or sad or frustrated? What's going on here? Give them something to learn. They'll be able to take what you've given them. Yeah, it is kind of like this, or it helps them to open up their language of this other realm. And then you're doing emotion and emotion and emotion and you're digging deeper into the emotions and the emotions and then this guy and hey client i'm just kind of curious what's going on in your stomach i mean is it again if it's really foreign give them some language you're not telling them what they're feeling you're giving them options to learn how to see themselves in this way so what's what are you noticing in your stomach i mean is it tight is it loose is it is it kind of just numb, or is it you know, really feeling like I'm not? What, what's going on in there? And now they're learning the language. Butterflies, yeah. They're learning the language. Same thing with spirit. So what are you, what are you making up about this? What's, what's the big truth of this? So, I mean, are you feeling like a victim here? Or are you feeling like really, are you empowered by this? What are you noticing about your energy here? It sounds to me like you're either deflated or maybe you're inspired. What's going on? All it is is you're just helping them to learn how to see and explore these other areas. The great news is you have four incredibly limitless, infinite directions you can take your coach. So even as a coach, you're doing emotions and emotions and you're exploring emotions well what's that emotion well what's under there well what's that emotion like oh, well how is that showing up in your body oh, let's go into body let's do some body questions body so what do you feel like doing and what are you noticing what's happening in your body and ooh, so what does it make you think of and all you're doing coach is you're just visiting realm to realm to realm to realm, to realm. okay so now Let's recognize, remember, your client is coming to you. By the way, your client is coming to you with an unsolvable problem. Every single one of your clients is coming to you with an unsolvable problem. Somebody tell me why that is true. Because they haven't figured it out yet. It's just that easy. If they could solve it, they, they would, right? And they can't because it's unsolvable. Coach, here, here's my big, giant, messy, unsolvable problem. It can't be solved. It's impossible to solve. You fix it. And that human can get activated. <gasps> so staying as the coach, we take that and now we start pulling apart. But the layers on this now, your client not only has an unsolvable problem, but they're really, for example, 
really awesome and brilliant at intellectual, figuring it out, and they can't figure it out. So now they have an unsolvable problem and their brilliance is broken. Or, well, I solve my problems by crying it out, or I solve my problems by laughing, or I solve my problems by screaming and yelling and being sad and angry, and that's not working. So what's really happened is that if we look at the enormity of, even just for one example, the enormity of thought and the intellectual, it's huge, it's vast, it's limitless, it's infinite. There is no end. But they have been working in this little, little compact bubble of thinking. And they've exhausted it to no end. And the answer doesn't lie in here. Because if it did, they would have found it. It's still in thinking. It's just not accessible to them. And so by doing this type of work, meeting them where they are, and then inviting them to explore and create awareness in these other realms, one of two things happens. And I know this is every single one of your coaching sessions. A, the thing they were looking for was lying in a different realm. Oh, coach, I had no idea I was feeling this way. Oh because they couldn't see their feelings. I had no idea my body was doing this. I had no idea I was holding all of this, this stuff on me. So by going to these other realms, we're able to unlock parts of the client that they didn't have access to before. And we also unlock parts of their comfortable realm. For example, their thinking, we're unlocking and opening more of their availability of thinking that they couldn't access before. How many times have you gone to another realm of emotions or body or spirit, and then your client goes, oh, I just remembered this. That is what you're doing. Make it sense? Yeah. All right. So there's so much more on this. I'm really trying to pack as much as I can in. Um, but I want to take a moment and tie this all together now. So now we've got the amazing eight-bar formula. We've got the four realms. Has anybody noticed what happens when we overlap the two? Awareness of thought, mind, cerebral, intellect. Awareness of emotions, heart, feelings. Awareness of uh, beliefs, spirit, and energy. Awareness of actions, body, results. These all tie in together. This is everything in our coaching. Every single moment of your coaching is in one of these spaces. And all it takes, as we learned before, is awareness. Once you have awareness, you, the coach, you hold the power of infinite possibility and change. And that is a pretty, pretty exciting place to be. So quick little uh, invitation, because I'm not really about promo thing, but I've got tons of ways to help you grow and help you. Um, my latest fun thing is I've created a new Facebook group called uh, the Masterful You Coaching Community. You can go to Facebook. I'll actually, I think if I've done this right, I'll pop in the link right here. Hey, I did it. Um, yeah, so Masterful You. And this is where I'm popping out videos all the time. It's a, I'm working on building this community. This is where you can ask questions. This is where I'll respond to how do I do this? What should I do coaching wise? I really invite you to come in and join this. It's also the launching point of a new membership platform uh, and uh, invitations and accesses to the class that I teach and all those other things. But this is just to come in and join and be a part of this community because it's, a, it's already got amazing coaches. And now I would love to have you all be a part of it as well. Speaking of coaching community as well, the other thing that was mentioned in the bio is the Coaching Skills Forum. 
the Facebook group, absolutely free. The Coaching Skills Forum is also absolutely free. These are calls that are twice a month. Um, coachingskillsforum.com. These are calls that are twice a month. And all, anybody who's there, we take one single aspect of our coaching and we dig into them in deep, powerful, provocative conversation. Our next call coming up is all is just focusing on inquiry or inquiry and how that shows up in our coaching and what makes it important and what gets in the way and challenges us as coaches and makes it hard. So go check out these calls. They're twice a month. If you go to the website, you see the dates, uh, it may not be all clear, but we talk every second Tuesday afternoon and every fourth Wednesday morning. Um, and the phone number is there and, or it's a, a, to call in and, and check out and they're absolutely free. There are credits, uh, CCEs, if you want credits, there's a charge for that, but come to the calls. Don't get any credits if you don't need them. And you can also access over 380 archived recordings that we've been doing these for the last 16 years. This resource is huge and powerful. If you want to learn and deepen any coaching skill that you have ever discovered and want to get stronger and better, go to these calls. And yes, thank you, Iris. I know because you've been on them. Um, please go check them out. And lastly, I am absolutely available to anyone who is, uh, who is wanting to have a, a, a quick check-in call or a little help. I've got a special little semi-promo thing that if you donate to a charity, I will give you minutes to dollars. So with the thing that's going on with the Ukraine, with the whole political world coming up, with uh, the political issues or social issues or anything that's dear to your heart, donate to them. Just give them the money and then let me know and I will, I will offer that. It's a, there's more information if you go to my website uh, and check that out. Um, and you can also just send me a quick email and I'll give you more information as well. Um, my job is here to help you all be the coach you are here to be because I can tell you the world, oh, the world needs us. The world needs us to show up fully and bring it on and handle everything that comes at us. So thank you so much for letting me be here today. Thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you, Ben. That was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you.